So in today's installment of Affinity Energy's INC Short Tips, I'm going to discuss best practices on integrating legacy Modbus serial devices into your modern control system or SCADA system. Believe it or not, one of the challenges a lot of integrators still face today is integrating serial Modbus devices. It's hard to believe in today's Internet of Things world that we still have serial devices out there, but that's still a requirement of a lot of meters and control devices. There's two ways you can go with integrating a serial device. The first is using what's known as a serial device server, and that involves basically extending your serial port using a virtual serial port off of your server computer. This is really an antiquated way of integrating serial devices and it's much more restricting and also requires additional software on your uh, server in order to implement. We don't recommend using uh, serial port servers. The other reason that we don't recommend doing that is the ability to share that device's information with multiple clients is limited to the computer or the device that you installed the virtual port uh, software on. What we recommend is really using something called a, a Modbus Gateway. This is a device that would connect your meters or your PLCs or your smart devices that communicate using Modbus RTU serial to a Modbus TCP protocol which can then be communicated over your Ethernet backbone. So an example of a device that would do that, this is a device that's made by Schneider Electric. This particular device has some unique specifications. Number one, it can be powered externally through a 24 volt DC power supply, or this particular device can actually be powered over Ethernet, which can be very useful in a retrofit situation where you may not have a power source nearby. So one of the things that we find often in integrating serial networks, which tend to have uh, slower performance, to a higher performance Ethernet network is we have to go through some tuning and companies that understand industrial communications tend to do a much better job of providing you with uh, parameters in order to tune the networks and we find that we're able to provide a higher level of performance and stability in those industrial networks when we use a product by say Moxa or there's other companies like Lantronics or Digi which also specialize in industrial networks and communications. OEM specific devices tend to be a little bit more expensive than some of the generic solutions that are provided by communication companies. An example of a solution that's a generic Modbus gateway is by a company called Moxa and they make a solution which again can be used with a variety of different instruments or meters or controls. This particular device does not have power over Ethernet so certainly not as advantageous as the Schneider product. These devices will have from the manufacturer a specification which says how many concurrent or simultaneous connections it can support. You could have a PLC connecting to your device, you can have a SCADA computer connecting to your device, you can actually have other Modbus testers connecting to the device in order to verify proper operation. This one has the option not only to connect this device into the network, but it has a separate port should you want to daisy chain or have another connection to another, say, Ethernet gateway that's close by or at least within 300 feet. Something else to bear in mind when you come uh, when it comes time to integrate your devices into your SCADA software or your controls network is understanding that when you use an Ethernet gateway it's connecting to your network over Ethernet and it may have one or multiple serial devices on the serial side of that connection. You must configure your SCADA system or your controls network to understand that it's dealing with a gateway device and not a native Modbus TCP device. So a lot of today's modern devices will have an Ethernet port built in, but you must recognize that that Ethernet gateway is in some cases, again, it's a limiting device for communicating to the serial device in the sense that it can't interface to all those serial devices simultaneously, because typically on the serial side, it's going to have a what's called a master and slave arrangement. So you have to take that into consideration when you configure your SCADA software or else you could run into potential problems. 